history was made here, period. And that's what led a lot of us to this, I think, is the yeah. personal experience of having our friends, either ourselves be sick or our friends be sick and dying, and nobody at any level appearing to care one whit about it. We could learn skills that we never learned before, and more important, that we could just create our place in the world, which is really what the Women's Building represented, the public center for women's culture. Two bartenders were dragged through splintering glass. People were dragged out into the parking lot where the police cars were waiting. Fourteen people were arrested. came to the Women's Building in 1975 to join the Feminist Studio Workshop as a student. I came to the Women's Building in 1977 to join the Feminist Studio Workshop, and I was here in various capacities until 1988. Obviously, this is where I met Sue, and we've been together since 1979. Sherry was the first person I met at the Women's Building, and we became best friends. And then finally, during oral history of lesbianism, we got together, and we've been together ever since. Judy Chicago started the feminist art program in Fresno, and then eventually decided with Sheila de Brettville and Arlene Raven that they needed an independent place. And they were looking for a name, and one of the people found in an old uh, antique bookstore a book called The Woman's Building, which was about the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. And so they decided to take the name of that building to honor that tradition and to make it visible. And so they started the Feminist Studio Workshop, which was a place outside of a mainstream patriarchal based institution. We're in a downtown warehouse district, and we were one of the first arts organizations to move down here. But this building was built by the Standard Oil Company. In fact, above the door, there are the letters SOC for Standard Oil Company. And it was originally a gorgeous building lined with marble. When we moved in here, it had been used as a warehouse for years. The woman who led the renovation is a woman named Cheryl Swanick, and she was this tough, butch lesbian. She had painted all of her tools, the tools of the woman's building, pink, um, which is something she learned from her father. Uh, if a man painted his tools pink, the other men on the, on the job site would never steal them. One of our first jobs as students in the Feminist Studio Workshop was to completely renovate this building. We knew nothing about those skills. We didn't have them. We soon came to realize that it was an opportunity to be empowered, that we could learn skills that we'd never learned before, and more important, that we could just create our place in the world, which is really what the Women's Building represented. It's a public center for women's culture, that we live in a, a world that is very male-dominated, and the art world was certainly not serving us as women artists. We were very invisible, and that we could carve out this little space that would be our space, and not just our space privately, but our space publicly, to say, here's what we're making as women artists. Come see. Hi, can you tell me how many women's building is? This is Sheila DeBrettville. She's one of the founding mothers of the women's building. The women's building really was a place that innovated the kind of art that's very popular right now in the art world. A kind of art that has community engagement, art that has collaborative performance art groups like feminist art workers, sisters of survival, the waitresses, you know, issue-oriented groups. So much of the work that we were doing was getting our voices out and commenting on things that if we could make posters, postcards, artist books, it was a way to kind of reach a wider audience. Thousands of women over the years came through this space and they learned skills, but most importantly, I think they felt honored as women, that your experience as a woman was valid in a culture that doesn't always honor women's experience, doesn't really value just the creativity that comes from being a woman. I think the Women's Building for its time was really unique. 
And because it had a space and it existed for so long, it became uh, just, a, just a symbol of that movement, of that period of time.